Well, hello, people of Defend the House, and welcome back to another one of mine and Jameson's long talky review roundups. This one's a little bit late. A little bit late, because we are talking about October, and it's probably the middle of November by now. Yes. But something, you know, a game you might have heard out came out right at the end of October, and it turns out it's not very short. No. Fucking Red Dead Redemption is a long game. Yes. If it had come out beginning of October, we would have been, you know, nice and formal on time. But it's taken a, yeah. a while, and, you know, you don't want to rush something yeah. like Red Dead. I mean, and I took my is, time. It's Defend the House as well. I mean, we're kings of being late, let's say. Uh, I mean, We've been better recently. Uh, yeah, I guess you're right. I mean... Uh, only, like, the old subscribers will remember when our reviews were horribly, I mean, we put up late. a best of x year i don't know what year it was in march uh <laughs> <laughs> did we actually yeah i think it was best of 2014 went up in like the m middle of march 2015 <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, yeah the good old days we're hey we're only like and professional now i mean whatever evolved. red red dead redemption 2 came out on the 28th of october and it's like a 60 hour main campaign so oh. Oh. no com no comments allowed in the chat saying wow this is so late no, you're yeah. getting deleted. Well, we, oh. yeah, these for anyone who's new, these videos are basically <laughs> uh, they're long podcasts, they're discussions, they're not really uh, reviews intended to like advise. It would be on... weird to put up a video that was just audio, basically. Like, <laughs> yeah, they're, they're, these they're, videos they're they have videos because it's YouTube, but it is really a podcast. Yes, podcast form discussion. Let's say yes, yeah, just like the myth videos, we just mistitle things. I don't actually do myths, and we don't actually do reviews. We do podcasts, and I I present game facts. Just like to title <laughs> things very shortly, things that can be represented in one word. So we're reviewing Red Dead Redemption Two and Forza Three. Four. Oh, oh, and it's Forza Horizon, Horizon Four. Yes. Four. The fourth, not the third. No, there was a couple other games in October that we won't be discussing. There was yeah. Assassin's Creed, yep. which we talked about on our podcast. Pimp that out. That would be in the description for anyone who likes these long, long form talky videos. There's also and... audio only versions available on the Podbean website of <laughs> these chats. So, And also there was Thronebreaker, the Witcher 3 Gwent single player campaign type thing thing which yeah which we will be playing in time we have dabbled in uh but we might be saving that for later a later month maybe december because we do want to talk about it but because of red dead i think when did it come out two days before red dead yeah yeah it was the t like yeah three days something like that yeah so you just haven't really had time to get into it but really do want to get into it really do want to talk about it so call uh, of duty December's also came out in october <laughs> Oh, yeah, we talked about that on the podcast as well. We're not reviewing Call of Duty, it's just multiplayer and blackout. Yeah. So, we are talking about Red Dead first, because it's going to be a long chat. As you can probably see from the timestamp, there's a lot to discuss in this game. A lot of thoughts that have been rummaging around my brain while going through this long journey. So, we're probably going to be talking about this game for like an hour. I predict <laughs> the video <laughs> length to be one hour and 25 minutes. <clears throat> That's my guess. One hour for Red Dead, 25 minutes for Forza? Yeah. Well, 20 minutes right. before it's a five-minute intro. That's the prediction. I hope I'm right. God. I do right. edit these things, so I guess I could do some, you know, editing magic. Anyways. Uh... So. A new Jameson. Rockstar game is always a bit of a mystery. Mm -hmm. They don't like to show their game off very much before they release it. Uh, yeah. Which I appreciate. Um, you know, GTA Five and this... And I'm sure the old games, I just don't remember, but GTA 5 and RDR 2, they were both like, hey, the game's coming out. And then, you know, two years later, they're like, the game's out in three months. And then two months before release, like, here's a gameplay trailer. And then they go, okay, bye. <laughs> and then they ship the game. Uh, they're in a very lucky position where they just don't have to really push their games that hard. They did have a, <clears throat> a big marketing campaign in the UK. But oh, I yeah, just yeah. think they're one of those companies that don't really need to do everything to sell their game. They have the no. luxury of being able to keep a lot of the stuff quiet. Yeah, and and I like that. I like not knowing what a game's going to be like. Uh, and I 
I think it wasn't until like right, like really close to release that we started to sort of get an idea of what RDR2 was going to be like. Uh, in, there were the previews talking about like, you know, these random encounters and like the reactive world. And you're like, okay, that sounds pretty cool. And, you know, <laughs> there's some sort of survivalist light things. And you're like, okay, weird, interesting. Uh, but you still, like, I didn't know what to expect f really when I started playing it. And I, I, I will say I, I wasn't expecting it to be, I wasn't expecting it to be like a number one game of the year sort of thing. Uh, no, like, I was actually going to say the exact thing. When Red Dead 2 was coming out, I was, I was looking forward to it, but I wasn't really that excited and I don't, I'm not trying to be like some hipster contrarian where I was like, I, I wasn't even excited for Red Dead. But it's just, I, I kind of, I get really excited about stuff that I consider to be new experiences. And I was a bit naive and I just expected a little bit of the same. I don't want to say GTA um, Rockstar's games have been formulaic, but they do have a, a format for their open world games. And I just was expecting Definitely. more of the same. And I was excited for more of the same. But I think the biggest surprise about Red Dead 2 is that it is a surprise. Red Dead 2 is really surprising. I did not expect it to be... Some aspects are very surprising, yeah. A lot of the package, I yeah, think, oh, is quite surprising. Yes. Uh, no, no, I agree. Uh, 100%. Yeah. Uh, I think Rockstar games have always been pretty amazing. But <laughs> in a way that they, they never quite... Uh, I don't know, latch on to the heart for me in the way that other games do. Like, you know, I liked, I totally like GTA 4, totally like RDR 1, GTA 5 is great. I would never put any of those games at my number one. No. Know, no and there's just, yeah, they I, miss, I agree. there's a, just something missing f with them that I, I just don't, you know, I, I like I said, yeah, the I don't have like a deep heartfelt attachment to yeah. those games well, I think uh, I think G the gtas are just they're too satirical to really yeah get, put your heart in them and they're kind of mean as well uh yeah. gta 5 is a very mean game in a way that I, I like but it's sort of hard to be like oh man i love gta the way that i love the witcher 3 or something like, mm -hmm. no that that would never happen uh yeah i would i would not have put any of rockstar's work in my like top 10 of all time no, probably not. Uh, but the, yeah, that's. It's, but they've always been good. Like they've always been oh, very yeah. good, and they've always been kind of amazing, like technical achievements. You know, yeah, I, massive I still quantity kind of, of yeah. stuff and activities for a single player experience. And RDR two certainly uh, fulfills all of those. Uh, you know, it is a very big, very expensive, very impressive game. Um, yeah, I think I think we should start. <laughs> with some of the stuff that you realize very early on in this game. There are some things that this game does better than any game has ever done. Maybe it maybe specifically in the genre, maybe ever. As you know, I'm going to I'm going to be confident and say that some of the stuff it does in this game it does better than any game ever. And I think a good place to start, you know, you can you can choose if you want to pivot in a different direction to kick it off, but maybe just talk about the world. Sure. You, we got to start That's, somewhere, and there's a lot of aspects to an open world game. Yeah, yeah. So that's I don't definitely, know if you want to start with story, or you want to go into. No, no, I think... no, no. World is good because that's the definitely the thing that uh, is probably the most long lasting, like impactful that I think this game will have. You know, where it's like it, the world and the way they built it and the reactive nature of it, which we'll talk about, is sort of like. Oh, I'm gonna be worried that like it's gonna ruin other games for me. Like, <laughs> like I, yeah. for the first like two hours or three hours of Hitman Two when I was playing it, I, I <laughs> like someone in the crowd is like, "Hey man, what's up?" And I, I went, I did the button prompts, I held yes! down left trigger, yeah, and it was like that. I wanted Agent Forty Seven to be like, "Hey, what's up, man?" Uh, <laughs> but he didn't, and I was like, "Shit, this isn't Red Dead, right?" Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I've done the L two things in uh, other games since. Yeah. I think I tried it in Spider-Man because I was playing a bit of that the other day. I was like, oh, fuck. Yeah. Okay, so... <laughs> yeah. So, yes, sure. Let's talk about the world. Yeah. Uh, I, I, the reason I wanted to start with the world is because yeah. there's a lot of things in the game and we're going to talk about, you know, the gameplay and the story. But I feel like the world is 
maybe almost revolutionary <clears throat> in the, the technical ways that they pushed it forward. Yeah. That the first couple of days of this game really... It was the first time since maybe playing Uncharted 2 where I got that futuristic feeling where mm. I could have believed that I was playing something from two years in the future. Yeah, it feels magical. Uh, it feels like uh, a next generation title because of yeah. some of the stuff in here. You feel like it's very strange to play stuff you haven't even seen. Like You expect to see tech demos for this stuff at like CEX. Not CEX. What's the tech show? CES? CES, yeah. Sure. CES. Like you don't expect to see this stuff for the first time when playing it with a controller. Yeah, it's like in here's Nvidia's AI tech demo right. on like a ten thousand yeah. dollar PC or something. Yeah, and I haven't yeah. got this feeling since, like I said, I remember playing Uncharted Two for the first time, mm. and it felt it was the first time I'd seen a game really feel cinematic and like a movie. And I was like, this feels like from the future. And the yeah. first two days before, you know, you you start to not get used to the quality of the game, and you. What's the word I'm looking for? Um, when you get used to something because you're in it so much. Uh, acclimatized to it? Uh, yeah. Dull to it maybe a little bit? or you, you get accustomed to just the way that Red Dead 2 is. But during yeah. the honeymoon phase of the first couple of days of Red Dead, it was extremely, extremely impressive. And we should talk about what they've done to make the world feel so <laughs> alive. Because... Uh, there's a lot of things this game does great, but this is like a technical achievement. And yeah, well, a technical maybe. I you know I don't know what the right, but it is it is an achievement. Um, and it's uh, it, it's weird because so I I don't even it's like do we need to describe these things? I don't even know. Uh, like I feel like everyone's played Red Dead. You know we're talking about the ways in which. You can bump into someone in Valentine and say you're sorry and and have like numerous lines of unique dialogue that are written for that encounter and and then you run out of town and someone is you know tries to rob you and there's unique dialogue for that and then you explore a house and you get drugged and they try and you know steal your money and there's unique dialogue for that and like it, that sort of stuff, I, I presume, is what you're referring to. Uh, yeah, the, the, the amount the, of unique character animations and dialogue is incredibly staggering. Yes, and it's it's a very rock star. I, I feel like it's weird. It, it's, it feels revolutionary, yes, but I also feel like no one is going to be able to do it. Mm -hmm. um, it sort of makes me think a little bit, a little bit of The Witcher 3, where it's like, man, they, they did so much story that was so good it feels unfair to expect other games to be able to oh, do yeah. this oh yeah like the manpower you would need to do something like this on the and scales. yeah red dead you know the the there's been some numbers floating around it's like 2000 people 8 years you know like 5 years of mocap like uh, jesus it feels it's a recurring theme i think with this game it feels unfair to everyone else <laughs> yeah games. it does because Rockstar is pretty much the only company on earth that can do this. They they're the only ones that can afford to do this. Yeah. Uh they're the only ones that have the staff and money to spend 5 6 7 8 years, hundreds of millions of dollars making a game with so much bespoke content uh that mm -hmm. is missable as well. Like oh you god could, yeah. You know, you could just mainline the story in 30 hours and see none none of this stuff basically. Um, so it's weird. Yes. Like, at, at, you know, throughout playing it and still while playing it for capturing for video purposes, I am still constantly seeing new things. Uh, like there's the, I don't know if you've seen one of the encounters outside of a gunsmith where they buy the gun and they like shoot the, the other person gets shot by the newly purchased gun. Um, no, I haven't seen it. See, there are like three variations of <laughs> yeah. that. Cause I saw, I saw that happen in roads. And then yesterday in Strawberry, it started, the same event was happening. I was like, oh, that's just going to be the same event. But then I turned around and looked, and it wasn't. The guy ends up shooting himself in the foot. And it's like a completely different version of this random encounter that can happen. And that yeah, just the, sort the of keeps... The random encounter quantity it, is just absolutely nuts. It's ridiculous. Yeah. And 
I that's just like the recurring theme. I feel like it's scale and detail on a level on like never before seen. No, in a way that feels illegal. <laughs> yeah, it's like you guys are cheating. Like I can't. You can't expect other people to be able to do this. Other devs like this is. I, the next game I expect to do this is like GTA Six, you know, like yeah, maybe I Cyberpunk. The, I don't know. Uh, I think the best example of it uh, that deserves the most praise is definitely the camp. Yeah, the camp feels Lord. like they had twenty people in mocap for a week or like a month, and then they were never allowed to leave. It yeah. feels so organic, and it feels like real people living out their lives, and you can just—it's so good. To just spectate and see what they do. Yeah. And it, the seamlessness of how you can uh, integrate into it. Like in the in the main world, you have these white little blips mm. on the radar, which signify uh, special events. I personally could have done without the white little blips. I understand that they're there so you don't miss content. But it would have been nice just to investigate because I heard something or I saw yeah. something. Uh, but the what? camp doesn't have that. There's no white blip saying, hey, there's a celebration going on and there's a sing song. It's just something that you very organically stumble upon. And the camp, to me, feels like the most alive place in the game. And that place is just a joy to hang out with. And the reason it's a joy because of the characters, which we'll have to wait for a second because we're going to get into the story a bit later. Yeah. But the, the camps and the cities, man. <laughs> man, oh man. They... I feel like I wish there was a better way to phrase it than saying the game feels so alive because <laughs> yeah. that's a statement that's been thrown around in like open world games and RPGs for a long time. Yeah, but it just and feels I've, alive. They've always <laughs> felt a little bit like bullshit to me, where it's like, oh, the game is so alive. Fallout, wow, wow, wow. All the NPCs, it's like, fuck off. This is all bullshit. They, they're yeah, not. it feels like a, a bit like a marketing statement at this point, but it, it does feel alive. Yes. I, w I wish I had a better way of explaining it because that's been said for a long time and it doesn't really, it doesn't really, I don't know why I need to kind of say it doesn't do it justice because everyone's played this game. Yes, yeah. Everyone who's listening has played this game. You guys have seen it. It's it's insane. There, every like NPC, and every every NPC feels like it's it's a unique NPC. Mm -hmm. I think, and it, I think it, they are. It wouldn't surprise me. And it feels like you can have. It feels like they thought of every possible interaction you could have with like every possible NPC in that game and they wrote dialogue for it and they yeah. put in animations and encounters some of them scripted some of them not scripted most of them just organic um, like every time something happened with an NPC in that game and I thought nah they didn't they wouldn't have thought of it then no no they didn't do it no nope, they did they did they put something in here oh good there's like three lines of dialogue written for me bumping into this guy carrying a, a, a crate and you know it's and then someone else reacts <laughs> to it as well and you're like what the f what, huh this is <laughs> illegal <laughs> um the credits for the game are amazing because they, they have they list um they list mocap artists, face models, unique NPC voice actors, and unique NPC mocap mocap artists. And there are like hundreds of names. Mm -hmm. Like the the face models, there's like probably 300 face models. The mocap people, mocap work for NPCs is probably like 100 people that just did mocap work for NPCs. The voice actors, same thing. There's like 100, 200 voice actors for the NPCs. And it really does feel like they, I mean, the, the whole game is set out to be like, we want to make a world that, uh, you know, feels immersive and breathing and living in a way that hasn't been done before. And for, I think for the first time ever, it, it does feel like it is alive. I know it's, yeah. it is such a dumb word, but like <laughs> it, Rockstar has always been sort of good at just, ignoring everyone else and then coming out and being like now nah, this is what we're doing this is here you've got your own bar of standards we have our own bar of standards and we're gonna lift it like 15 feet every time we put a game out and we don't expect anyone else to compete with us because we're rockstar fuck you <laughs> and 
two definitely feels like that uh, with the way with the world. I think that was going back to like my first statement that my biggest surprise of uh, Red Dead that it was a surprise at all. The immersion route uh, was not something I was really anticipating. No, yeah. They've always been gamey <laughs> games, and none of like this game a lot of times doesn't really feel like a video game. Like, if you stumble into a poker game in any other open world game, usually the game will pause and it will have some instructions of how to play poker, but there'd be like unique dialogue and introductions to every single minor scenario. Even playing dominoes would have <laughs> yeah. unique interactions. And it reaches a level of organicness, which is so, <laughs> so immersive that I think it was off-putting for some people. People found it to be a little bit slow yeah. and realistic in a way that I don't think people were anticipating for a Rockstar game because GTA, GTA is very arcadey and gamey games. Yeah, and like they've... This they've does feel of, like a cowboy simulator at times. Yeah, I mean, Rockstar has always been good about making a world that's easy to immerse yourself in just because of, you know, the sort of audiovisual... Uh, their characters have always had a certain feel to their movement, you know, a little animation heavy, a little heavy in general. Uh, like it's always, they've always been a little clunky to play. And, you know, you, they like you to be able to do lots of things in their world. You know, they're very good about building everything around making the world feel, I don't know, cohesive, but not, yeah, they've, they felt very much like video games for a long time. Mm -hmm. And it's weird. Red Dead Two, like, if I, I, I'm, I wonder how more mainstream people react to it. I mean, obviously, it's already sold a shit pile of copies. I was checking out the Reddit, and a lot of people weren't really making it through the first like chapter or two. Yeah, they are so slow. They're that's slow. that's sort of like a good transition into the wider fact of the game that this game is like made by crazy people for crazy <laughs> people in a in a way that i find really surprising like it's yeah i like um you know the metro games because you have a gas mask and you can wipe the blood off your gas mask and your map and is a real thing on a clipboard with and you have to pull out your zippo lighter to read it and like you know, it's all about keeping you immersed in the world. And those games are for crazy people. And when people say, fuck Metro, I'm like, it's okay. I get it. I understand. And Red Dead 2, it's like, they made a whole game for someone crazy like me. <laughs> yeah. And I, I did not expect them no. to. I, that really is a pivot. Yeah. There are uh, gameplay mechanics in this game which are fundamentally not very enjoyable <laughs> no. and are literally just in there to make it more immersive. Yeah. How many times did you forget to take your fucking guns off of your horse before going into battle? More than I care to admit. And how many times did you forget to whistle to your horse to follow you as you went off in a wagon for a mission? More than I care off? to admit. In the and then your horse is 500 miles away and you're like, ah. Oh, Fucking hell, I'm yeah. nowhere near. I've got to walk for 20 minutes because I didn't yeah. tell him to follow me. And there there were times where I was like, I don't know if this was the right call to <laughs> yeah. do this because it would have been funner, more fun, sorry, to do it this way. But they were so committed in a way that is like really surprising. Yeah, I didn't there's... think Rockstar were the company to take risks to achieve a level of immersion <laughs> rather than putting gameplay and fun first. What's maybe most baffling to me about Red Dead is that it's it feels like a an indie game made by a crazy person. You know, like um, Return of the Obra Dinn came out recently, and that's a, a game made by one man. He did every single thing in that game, except for the voice acting. And everything about it is like, this is like a peek into this person and what he likes, right? And it's everything about it is just exactly the way he wants it and if you don't like it who cares it doesn't matter he made it because he wanted to make it red dead is like that on a on a scale yeah. where it's like it, it feels very authored and the author of red dead feels like a bit of a lunatic uh yeah, except that, it's that's a good point except it's a triple a perhaps even beyond triple a experience in that it you know like 
They spent hundreds of millions of dollars and years and years making a game that feels completely counter to everything that's come out. Yeah. yeah. It's like, a, a, it would be like if they took the next Avengers movie and made it like a, you know, an indie <laughs> art house thing. And you're yeah. like, what the fuck is this? What am I watching? How did this get I, made? I mean, Red Dead has enough of the old format to keep, it, you know. Yeah, but there is so much stuff in it that you're like, what? Why would they? This is what? You, this is crazy. I, how did they get away with this? Oh, right, they got away with this because no one says no. No, like yeah. I don't know who. I don't know if there was one person that sort of had the grand, you know. I don't know if it's one of the Housers or whatever that has sort of the grand vision for the whole game or if it's a team of people or whatever, but it, it feels cohesive and authored in a way that AAA, especially AAA open world games, are not. Where it's like, you know, <laughs> I played AC Odyssey right before Red Dead 2, and those two games couldn't be more opposite. Um, <laughs> yeah. You know, AC is like... It's the all open world game. It's the er game. It's just like, here is every fucking thing we can think of that you like about video games in theory jammed into a giant package. And then Red Dead is just like, we've been working in a bunker for eight years. We don't know what the outside world is doing. Here's our weird thing. And it's like, oh, oh, I like this weird thing. Oh, this is good. Uh, I thought... I honestly think it's also partially a smart business move. Because they're going from something crazy, radical, and open, like GTA V, where they can be funny, and they can be satirical, and they can really push the envelope, and they're kind of bringing it back down to something a bit more humble in setting, like a Western, yeah. where there isn't as much stuff to go mad with. And maybe there was just like a little boardroom discussion where we were like, how do we shock people and surprise people with something that's kind of taken a step back when it comes like comparing it to gta yeah. in terms of the range they can do gameplay wise so they were they was like fuck it let's just make the realest in-game world that people have seen and pair it with a very very long and emotionally hard-hitting character-driven story yeah like and i think the deviance from gta 5 is what was so surprising and most enjoyable because i remember playing red dead one and i didn't really think it was that different from gta 4 this might be yes. my me as a kid not no, really being no. that observant but i just don't remember them being that different i think you're 100 percent right and and again i, I you know I, I played i played all of red dead one in three days over the summer the year it came out it yeah. was like you know 24 hours of playtime. i mainlined the story i was like wow that was great i was like you know 16 15 when it came out and i was like that was cool that was a good game and I never played it again except for Undead Nightmare. And mm. but looking back on it, and you know, looking at some of the story stuff, and remembering it uh, as I would play through Red Dead Two, I'd be like, oh, I vaguely remember like the Irish character and the snake oil salesman, and like this yeah. and that. And I think Red Dead One, and I remember also like people saying, oh, it's just GTA on horses, and that was sort of a meme. But like, I think it that's kind of accurate, especially in comparison. To to two because the first game was like there are a lot of like really dumb like satirical characters and mm, yeah it has a lot of like the classic rock star writing problems of o you know over the top over the top and john marston being like i can't believe i'm doing this again oh mm -hmm. boy i just want to get out of this and i'm doing all this crazy dumb bullshit for all these crazy characters whoa um Red Dead 2, it's like the entire game was inspired by, you know, these sort of newer uh, sort of Western movies that have come out in the last, like, 10 years. And, and and obviously there are many older ones. But, like, you know, it's like There Will Be Blood or the main one is uh, Assassination of Jesse James. Or it's like, here's this three-hour movie that's just like a real slow burn. Yeah. And it's about it's about creating a world and atmosphere and then and filling it with interesting characters and then just sort of letting you sit in that for a very long time without a whole lot happening. And uh, 
We should maybe was... just keep saving story for a few more minutes. But okay. go, yeah, go ahead. We're, I, we're I was going to transition, transition right into the story. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was going to also say like, you know, still on the gameplay front, um, you know, the, the way the character moves, uh, the movement speed, the like animation priority of everything. Uh, it that's a those parts of it feel it was weird the first like five maybe even eight hours of the game I was like I don't know about this I was a me little me too I was concerned me too you know what Let, let's save story for last let's talk about gameplay yeah Let, um, let's go into gameplay I want to I wasn't okay this is weird I wasn't enjoying this game for the first like ten hours or so mm. I really wasn't really enjoying it and this might be a bit controversial, but I don't really think the game plays that well. No, it doesn't. Uh, it, the characters move better, but Rockstar games have always had this clunkiness. Where oh, yeah. The character feels like a little bit fat and hard to move. Because I remember I was when I was doing one of the myth recordings, I was doing, I don't know if you've seen volume three, when I yeah. make him fall in the geyser. But right. I was really trying to make him die from being pushed by the steam. So what I was doing is I was chucking a Molotov at my foot, and then I was trying to get in this pool of water at the last second to put myself out. But Arthur is so, like, fat and chunky that sometimes he'd have to do this whole, like, slow rotation before his momentum would start moving him into the... It's hard to describe. It's just clunky. And the cover system still kind of sucks. Yeah, and the shooting is still not very good on a controller, I think. Like, not on a controller, no. Yeah. I'm not a console shooter guy anymore. I haven't played a console shooter in a long time. Yeah. Uh, so I was really garbage <laughs> for the first 10 hours or so. Uh, I like that the auto-aim, auto-lock-on system is a little bit less forgiving than in GTA. I remember in GTA, it was lock-on push up, shoot, and you would headshot everyone. And it's yeah. still pretty similar yes, by the end yeah. of the game. You're pretty much locking on, pushing up, shooting. Yeah. But still by like 70 hours in, I'm still missing people. I'm still shooting people's hats off instead of headshotting people. So it's a little bit less forgiving. And sometimes you just have to take it a bit slower. But I just don't really think overall the game plays that well. And when you're five hours into the game and you... You don't have much money, so I'm getting frustrated at the bounty system, system which we'll, we'll talk about in a second. Uh, you haven't really got attached to the story or characters, and I don't like shooting on a controller. I just wasn't having that much fun for the yeah. first day. The main thing that was bothering me early on, like, I I never have been bothered by the... I was never particularly bothered by the character movement. Um, that style of movement, I, I just don't really find aggravating. I it's, remember people... It's okay. can, I remember people complaining about it with The Witcher 3 as well, where it's like Geralt has a, you know, a bit of a spin-up speed time before he's moving and, you know, looting yeah. indoors is kind of clunky. And, and I agree, it is, but it just doesn't bother me. Um, and that's the case with 2. The, the movement is like, he's very slow and clunky and, and it is occasionally... The, the thing that frustrates me most with the movement is when I go to try and sleep. And yes. you have to like find the perfect little angle where it's like, oh, there's the Y button so I can sleep. Um, yeah. But for the most part, it doesn't didn't get in my way. What uh, what I was annoyed with, I mean, obviously, I was also missing all my shots like completely terribly, and and I didn't realize like it takes a while to get used to the the fact that you have to you know recock your gun after every shot because yes. they're old yeah. guns. Um, which I I actually really like that. Uh, it just was a little jarring at first like that especially that very first shootout where i'm like click uh, like i pull the trigger and nothing happens I'm like what the fuck's going on and it's like oh yeah. he needs to recock the gun um i think i know where you're going with your complaint because the thing that i was most bothered by initially was learning to play the game um yeah not the l2 interaction thing i had some problem with i kept accidentally pulling my gun out and i was like i don't want to aim my gun at this guy there are i just wanted to lot. talk to him of one-off control things there are a lot of button combinations and controls changing depending on what you're looking at or what you're yeah. doing i still mess up i don't know why it, it, it it's like hold triangle or y to 
search a cabinet, but it's hold X to loot and hold X to close or square on PlayStation. I never um, close. <laughs> I never close either, but it's like, why wouldn't it be the same button to open close? Uh, you know, there's things like that where it's just like, I don't understand why these controls are changing. But like, I was getting really aggravated by failing or fucking up uh, these sort of encounters and then either getting a bounty or dying because it was like taking me, seriously taking me out of the sort of immersive experience that they were building. Like I remember early in Valentine encountering a duel and the guy challenged me to a duel and I'm like, yeah, sure. And they... The, the duel starts and it's slow-mo and then in the upper right or upper left corner, which is, you know, I'm playing on a decent sized TV. It's like, wait, 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 let me read this thing that's three feet away from the center of the screen. And it's like a tiny little text window that says, hold right trigger to begin the draw. And when you're, when you're dueling is bar is high and you've pulled the trigger in enough, then you can pull the trigger and shoot and you might win the duel. And, and, and then it, and something else pops up in the bottom right corner of the screen. I have to look to the other side. It was like, get ready to duel. And it's tutorializing. And then I'm dead. And I'm like, what the fuck? I, what the, I don't even know what just happened. And I just like put the controller down. I'm like, fuck this game. I don't know what to do. I don't know how to play it. And that was what was really aggravating me for the first five to 10 hours of just getting used to all of their weird controls and all of the like one off control interfaces you need to remember for the sort of one off encounters that you only see every eight hours or whatever, where it's like, mm -hmm. like the duel. Like I, I didn't figure out how to duel until like 25 hours in and I think yeah, they. I still don't really get it. <laughs> I, I still don't really get it either. I just I, I know more. You know, pull the trigger slowly and then slowly pull it quickly and, then... and shoot. Uh, you know, <laughs> um, but that's sort of like a, a recurring theme throughout the whole game. Is there are so many one-off or specific like animation or control things for different activities, and they the whole game is very poor at explaining things to you. Just across the board there are so many things that it doesn't tell you uh and that was what i found really frustrating it's just like i'm failing these cool encounters and that completely ruins the flow of the game because i die and reload and the encounter's gone and then i don't know how to i there i have no opportunity to learn that encounter because i won't see it again for another 10 hours you know um, yeah that was what really bugged me for the first five to ten hours uh once I had gotten used to the shooting, moving, and figured out all, all the controls, I think for me the gameplay is just is perfectly fine. It doesn't. It never got yes. in my way after that. Uh, it's occasionally rather enjoyable. Um, I don't like the cover system. I almost never used it. Uh, I barely use Dead Eye as well because I'm a crazy person. Whoa, really? Oh, I, I don't, use it so much. I don't like how it ruins the immersion. <laughs> Fair, fair enough, fair enough. Uh, because, again, this game is made by crazy people for crazy people. And every time it would, like, force me into dead end, I'm like, no, I don't want to do this. Just let me aim at them. I don't want to... This is ruining my immersion. Um, but, you know, the dead eye is fine. It, it works. It's very video gamey. It feels yeah. very cheap. Uh, but it's functioning. And I think, yeah, after the long learning curve, I... I I've well passed the point of like, ah, eh, no, nothing is getting in my way anymore of playing yes. the game, which was the biggest hurdle. It's just... Everything clicked after about 10 hours with me. Yeah, and once I once everything clicked and I was able to just stay in the game, in the flow, uh, yes. I was able to, you know, that's when I really started to love the game. And, uh, and staying in that flow is really nice. Like, I, I barely died throughout the whole thing as well. It's, it's a pretty yeah. easy game once you get used to the shooting. Uh, yeah. but that, that initial curve, that's a problem. A lot of open world games have is just those initial like five to 10 hours can be really shitty. A lot of the times where they're just it's, bad yeah. at, they're it's bad hard at to teach unloading. people things. Yeah. The Witcher three was right. really good about that. Just, you know, you have white orchard and it's like a nice small learning area. Uh, and then they open it up for you. But I remember even, no, I remember you struggling with The Witcher 3, actually, now that I'm thinking about it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, so, um, I'm just I've looking, got, I'm just I've got some complaints. Me. Please. Complaints. Ooh, no 10 out of 10 from us. Oh, I do have one as well, gameplay related. Yeah, go ahead, yeah. Set, 
Here come the contrarians complaining about Red Dead Redemption 2. I have a look a couple of problems with some of the systems in the game. Okay. Uh, not a big fan of the bounty system. Hmm. I don't really... Especially the beginning of the game. Like, why would I have a bounty on my head for, for knocking someone over on my horse? Does that always happen? I thought bounties were for, like, major criminals and you get bounty hunters to go after you. Does <laughs> yeah. that mean pushing someone over sets a bounty hunter after me? And like twenty dollars is a lot of money. I just pushed someone over. Why is it like twenty twenty bucks back in those days? It's like probably a couple hundred bucks. Yeah, yeah. And then at the beginning of the game, I don't have any money, so I'm scared to like do anything. Right. And then this kind of flows into another complaint: is the economy is kind of broken. <laughs> yeah, it's very. For the first like fifteen hours, I'm completely poor, and I'm having to kind of. Uh, integrate with some of these game mechanics that I didn't touch for the whole game, which is like selling horses and selling carriages and right, going yeah. to the fence. And then you do like one heist. <laughs> Spoiler, you do heists in a Rockstar game. And then you have a lot of money and that money never goes. Yeah. And you never have to worry about bounties unless you go on a rampage. Yeah. You never have to worry about like hunting and selling. And they, they introduce a lot of money-making mechanics in the game, which is like, this is fun if I need to use it, but you don't have to ever use them. And it seems really strange. Like, in Chapter 3, it introduces horse fences. Like, I can sell horses. It's like, I never... Why the fuck yeah. would I... Why would I need to sell horses to these guys? You've given me loads of money. Yeah. And then in the epilogue, which I, I won't spoil anything about the epilogue, but you don't have much money. And I'm like, oh, this is fun. I actually have to <laughs> worry about how I'm using my money. And then... Eventually, in the epilogue, you get a lot of money. And then I'm like... <laughs> yeah. And I, I was talking to you in Discord, and I was like, oh, this is fun. Again, I have to think about... You have to, like, actually loot people and, like, sell their yeah. gold watches or whatever. And, th and this person was blind on the street, and they asked for a dollar. I was like, I can't fucking spare a dollar right now, <laughs> mate. I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm really sorry. And it's just... They introduce all these possible ways of making money. And, like, survival in the Wild West is a big part of it. Like, surviving day to day. How am I going to get the money to eat today? Yeah. And it, it never becomes part of the game. and Which is fine. But it seems like they wanted you to because they kept introducing mechanics and ways to make money. But you don't need to make money. I just thought that was a bit weird. Yeah. And this is kind of a similar complaint. There is a whole crafting part of the game where you can pick herbs and you can make tonics you can but you just don't need it pelts. yeah i didn't touch it you just you don't need all these these herbs and these tonics because the game's pretty easy yeah especially if you use dead eye like i do the game is not difficult I and you don't get a know lot of there's... tonics from looting guys is there a difficulty selection no at the... no, no i don't think rockstar games have difficulty levels maybe i don't I think don't so i don't think so uh, so yeah the, like I would set down at my campsite and it was like do you want to cook this beef and do you want to make this potion I'm like potion's not the right word but I'm like no <laughs> I'm fine yeah I've got loads of, loads of stuff I think I did two cooking sessions in that entire in my whole playthrough where it was just like oh, I haven't I'm out of food to eat to fill the, the core so I'll just yeah. cook like my six pork chops and then eat those like once every five hours <laughs> And at the beginning, I was spending like uh, 10 minutes making the split point bullets, you know, when he gets a knife right. and he's like, yeah, and they do more damage. And you get three bullets for 10 minutes of work. <laughs> and I was like, that's probably worth it, but I'm still just headshotting everyone. Yeah, and it's a one shot they're kill. They're all regardless. dying. <laughs> like. um, so, I don't like when it comes to the bounty system, the economy, and the crafting system, they just don't really seem. To complement the way the campaign goes, if that makes sense. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. They all become a little bit redundant quicker than I would have had it, have expected. Like, yeah. say the game ends and you do one big heist, and whoa, you're rich. So for post game stuff, you don't need to worry about bounties, but you don't need to worry about these three core systems after like twenty hours, which I thought was a bit strange. Yeah, I didn't really. The bounty stuff never got in my way because I, I don't really play. I don't really do dumb shit or like heist or what. You know, I don't. I am not. I don't cause a lot of trouble in my open world games. Uh, and I didn't really like run into people accidentally very often. Uh, but <laughs> I'm bad at the horse. I kept running into people all the seeing time. Seeing everyone yeah. complain about it, and I'm like, okay, I completely understand. Uh, I just didn't really. It didn't really get in my way. But the the crafting stuff definitely is just kind of like I don't really know 
why it's all there. Like there's a huge amount of crafting stuff for with pelts as well and hunting and you know, you can get better satchels and all this clothing you can craft. And I'm like, I don't really, I don't need to do any of this. Uh, no, I, I think it's fine. fine to have these immersive systems in the game because yeah. they're optional. And again, they all make you feel more like you are part of the world. <laughs> yeah. I just thought it was a bit weird that the campaign pushes you past needing to worry about them. Because it would have been nice to have to think about how much food I have on my on my person yeah. when I go out for like a long trip. And I, I am down for those nerdy immersion moments and you just don't have to think about them really. And that ties into the couple of things that I was going to say, which is one, um, there are definitely times where I wish they had gone further with their immersive stuff, which probably would have been a bad idea. Uh, for the, Yeah, for most people, yeah. For most people, yeah. But for me, there are times where I'm like, and this was similar with Kingdom Come Deliverance, because uh, Red Dead 2 is really like the big budget, somewhat more AAA friendly version of Kingdom Come Deliverance, which is again, <laughs> yeah, made for is. crazy people. Like, I wish that the food stuff mattered more, or there were times where I would try something, or I would expect something to work in a realistic manner, and it didn't. And I was like, oh, that's a bummer. Like when I was watching your myth video recently, where it's like, dipping a fire arrow into the water i'm like what what are they doing like it doesn't it doesn't put it out like what the f what are you doing rockstar oh uh, maybe it's like that napalm like substance maybe that doesn't yeah go out. I, maybe yeah they're just so, showing showing the facts maybe it's realistic there are a few times where i was i would be inspired to test the the extents of the game's realism and it would let me down uh pretty minor that, yeah that's the problem when they go so far with immersion that yeah anything that steps outside of that box is a is, disappointment it, it breaks it yeah and for any other game in the world it would be a nitpick yeah but when you set this standard there's there was a couple moments in the game um i don't uh, i don't know if this is i try not to put a spoiler thing anywhere in this video but there is a specific part of the game where you have a lot of cash on yourself mm. and then you jump in you jump in a river and you swim for ages and you also have like th right. this nice watch on you and i'm like were the booze laminated back in those days <laughs> nope. would they survive <laughs> a not. swim like that <laughs> nope and in the cutscene you get out the water and you're like handing out these crisp wads i'm like ah. <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> i'm not i'm not sure about that rockstar and again, it's nitpicking because it's a video game and who cares? It's a heist and they ended up in water, but in, it's just because they set the standard for themselves. And yes, like, there are a few times where things. they either didn't think of something or they just, you know, they were like, come on, it's a video game that I wish that they hadn't. Uh, but it's probably for the better that they yeah. did. It's, it's, it's probably kind of, It treads a line of yeah. trying to, they're, they're still trying to please as many people as possible. Yeah, they still want to sell their vision. 30, 50, 100 million copies, right? Mm. Uh uh, that ties into the core systems of mainly the eating part of it. Um, I, I wish that mattered more because if you don't eat, like, uh, your health bar just drain, you, like takes longer to recharge. Yeah, It's like, oh no, like it doesn't really matter. Uh, I have my tonics. If I really need it, I have my tonics, which refill my, my health bar. And the, the, the eating stuff... And the sleeping just sort of, it feels like it's there to make it more immersive where it's like, oh, Arthur would eat and sleep. So you have to eat and sleep because well, sleeping Arthur... has a, a good benefit. It talks about everything. Well, sure. Yeah, I know. I know. But like, but if, you, doesn't really. if you let all that stuff just drain, it, it doesn't really hurt you all it, more. It, I wish you were punished more for not eating and sleeping. Uh, yeah, we're the, we're the people who complain about the opposite stuff of everyone else. People who are saying right. the immersion ruins the game, and we. I want them for to more. go further with it. <laughs> yeah, we we want more. Like I was annoyed in Kingdom Come Deliverance when I realized you don't have to poop, and I was like, "What is this <laughs> bullshit? This game is a fraud. Like <sighs> the apples in my bag will rot, but I don't have to poop. What?" <laughs> <laughs> uh maybe i don't actually need that in a game but you know what i mean it's just like i wish i wish that stuff mattered more because you can just there's a lot of stuff you can just sort of ignore or you just do it because the game says you have to do it like eating and sleeping and i just wish that they had 
I wish there was like a mode that you could turn on. Yeah, like, I was do you want just the about to say. Yeah. Do you want this is the fuck off crazy mode. This is for sickos. You want to play this yeah. mode? I'd be like, yeah, let's do it. They could um, have a normal mode. Like this is the standard mode. Yeah. Then they have a one below where, you know, your guns don't get left on your horse and you don't have to worry about X and Y. And then they have the crazy person mode, which yeah. I would have played. I would, you can't go in the cold without a jacket or you would die. Yeah, you'd freeze to death or your guns yeah. need more maintenance. Like... I, I don't like that in some games, but when a game builds everything around that, I, I'm okay with it. And I, yes, I yeah, I wish they had taken it that. further at times or had an option to take it further. But again, it's probably for the better that they didn't because this game is already, I, I feel like, very unfriendly to a more mainstream audience. Uh, and the last thing I was going to say... Uh, I really don't like that the honor system shows up on your screen. Uh, oh, and I, okay. I, I dug through all the settings and there is no way to hide that. Um, the honor system doesn't really make much sense unless you think of it as Arthur's uh, internal, like, conscious, you know, where it's like he's in a cave looting a corpse and you lose honor for that. And it's like, wait, is it? I initially thought the honor system was like people see you doing something dishonorable, but I think it's more like it's Arthur's internal moral code. I'm not sure, but like I you think go it's <laughs> I think it's more for them. They're like the game changes depending on if you are an asshole or not. Here's a bar. I'm trying to let you know, player, that it does change things. And I Maybe don't think I think that I I literally just don't like that it shows up. Um, <laughs> okay. I wish I could just turn it off and be like. I don't like having a little pop-up every time I do something dishonorable and having a big bar filling up on my screen where it's like, like I'm the type of person that would rather have all of the HUD turned off all the time. I'm the type of person, like I said, I don't want to use dead eye because I find it ruins the immersion. When you have, when you rob a stagecoach and then a fucking red cowboy symbol with a minus in front of it shows up on your screen, I'm like, Oh, I guess I did something dishonorable. My bar is going down. It just feels very video gamey, and I I hope, you know, I'm sure the PC version, yeah, you'll be able to turn it off with mods or something. Uh, I'm just surprised that it's there. Mm. I know it's important to the story stuff, especially near the end. That that bar can mean a lot. Um, but mm. I just kind of wanted to turn it off the whole time. Uh, That's small fair. thing, small thing, but yeah. I have actually just a couple of miscellaneous complaints. Okay. Let's get all the negativity out of the way because there's a lot of gushing to come when we get to the story. Um, I don't think hair in this game looks very good. <laughs> the hair I, on the Xbox. I don't even notice the PS4. It's under those good, good cowboy hats all the time. A lot of the game doesn't look great under a microscope. I'm not sure if you ever like... In cutscenes when things get a bit close, some things don't look so hot and i noticed the hair specifically was a little bit rough in the game i should so say i, I played say, on the xbox one x so everything is native 4k and i never there was nothing that looked bad yeah to me. <laughs> i played most of it on the standard ps as you know i played on ps4 pro but a lot of it was outputted at 1080p right i was recording as as i went along so maybe that was why i saw some of those maybe you know on the 4k the native 4k xbox x whatever the fuck it's called Maybe that's uh, a bit smoother than what I was playing. Like, yeah. Just some things under a microscope were looking a little bit rough. Um, and I found the up-close executions to be kind of inconsistent. And also, so? you, you know when you run up to someone, you press it, and you do like a fancy... Yeah. And their head and explodes. Their head off, Sometimes yeah. it just wouldn't work for me. And I'd be like just shooting at their feet, and I'd huh. be embarrassed. And then he'd punch me, and I'd die. And I was like, fuck's sake. I don't know if I ever knew how to trigger those. They would just happen when things got like frantic uh if you just get up close and click shoot you initiate oh the, okay uh, execution. yeah i never tried to do those they always just sort of happen and i was like oh uh, okay uh what <laughs> and last mm. I, I, I actually don't know if i have any <laughs> any more complaints i think rockstar i think they think they're sneaky with their uh you ever done one of those quests where you go at day, but they want it to be set at night. So yep. they try and sneak in this day to night transition. Yep. I'm like, you did not get away with that. Yeah, yeah. I, <laughs> I saw six hours just fade past. You didn't get past me. Yeah, I would notice that. <laughs> Some a few of those times. are so rough. Yeah. There are a few times <laughs> where the, the lighting just like completely changes and you're like, whoa, 
did someone turn the lights on? Like, what the <laughs> shit yeah. just happened? Like, or the rain. I've had the rain sometimes be like downpour, and then I like take two steps and it just stops. It's oh, like, really? Uh, it's like the Truman Show just being like, what? Did someone turn the rain off? Like, what the fuck? Um, it's a yeah, pretty like, is the- polished game overall, though. Oh, yeah. Those um, are just like some miscellaneous nitpicks I wanted to throw out because when we dive into the story, uh, oof, I don't really have. Don't really have many negatives left to say um, going going forward. There were definitely a few bugs that I have encountered, uh, but you know it's yes, it's, I, I had a few. It's definitely the most polished uh, big boy open world game I've played in a while. Uh, yeah, and I remember RDR one being <laughs> a little wild with its bugs uh, in a way that this game does not have. But same thing with the immersion when it's like oh when there's a bug, uh, it's very disappointing because you're like ah oh, shit. Oh god, you know, it's it it ruins the flow, uh, which is never fun, but yeah. For the most part, it's a ridiculously polished game. This uh, is a, a little bit in in the miscellaneous car- category before we move into the, like maybe how the game looks and maybe the story stuff. Uh, I really like the horse mechanic in the game. I think it's a nice way to do emotional attachment without being manipulative. Yeah. Games like to be like, here's a dog. You Pe- like dogs, right? Peter oh, the dog's you. dead. Ah, oh, fuck. But in this game, the horse is a tool. Yeah. A really helpful tool. It's the way you get around. It's the way you carry your stuff. And you do get a very natural bond with the horse without there having to be pivotal story moments. Yeah. And the horse doesn't you, say, you know, I love you, Arthur, either. Which people is might weird. pull out like Shadow of the Colossus as a comparison. <sighs> but this game's longer. So you have longer to build a bond with a horse. Yeah. And I had one proper horse fatality and it hurts it hurts bad i lost two horses across the uh across the game and it, it stinks again another little miscellaneous thing uh I've, i really like the the melee combat the fist fighting oh really they're cool huh. yeah really cinematic uh i don't it's know how many melee like. weapons yeah i don't know how many melee weapons you've used Never. but it just looks cool the animation is extremely high quality hmm. and i just found it really satisfying and hard hitting i <laughs> I liked fist fighting people in this game. I was, I, I got, I, there were definitely some fights where they just went on for too long. And I was like, ah, oh, block. I think yes, some people punch, are block. tougher than others. They definitely are, yeah. Um, but I, yeah, I didn't really engage with that stuff. Except for when the story basically asks you to. Uh, I, I don't think I've ever touched a melee weapon in that game. <laughs> now Ooh, that I think about nasty. it. I bet the machete even is a not knife? pleasant. You, you start with a knife. The knife is... Oof. Oh, yeah, the knife. Okay, that's true. There is the knife. Yes. Uh, yeah, there's, some, there's some deadly weapons in there. Yeah, I would just shoot everyone with a shotgun. Uh, Oof, yeah. Shotguns are very good in that game. I like the uh, the sawn off one that you can hold in your pistol. Slot. Yes, that was... A little problematic once or twice uh, when they have the cinematic like dead eye save the guy who's being held hostage moments and it would sometimes pull <laughs> out my sawed off and I was like, oh no! And I pull the trigger and it somehow doesn't kill the person, you know, like... Yeah. I was like, well, that, I've, thank God the game realized <laughs> uh, because... I, I definitely accidentally shot the wrong person in the head and it forgives it. Yeah. Because like, I would have blown both of these people <laughs> in half with this sawed off yeah. at this range. Uh <laughs> That stuff, all the stuff with the guns, I found very annoying uh, because it would be like, it, I, I apparently there are ways to like lock in, be like, this is my gun, never unequip it, except for, you know, the long guns on the horse. But like regularly, it would just switch me to some shitty cattleman revolver. And I'm like, where? Yes, I don't yeah. want this turd. Uh, where's Arthur's you know sick vo- gun? Like, I used, I used the vol- double volcanic pistol. The volcanic pistol is very good, and the Schofield revolver. I liked that yeah. one a lot, and I it, it, I felt like it was constantly doing it. Where it's like, no, you've got this shitty revolver, and then also you know you we've given you a bow because we want you to use the bow for this mission. It's like a piss off. Give me my Lancaster repeater, goddamn it! I don't uh, know if you ever tried to main the bow. But holy no. shit, that thing is actually really, really deadly. Huh. It's incredibly stable. I use it right near the end. I just was like, I'm just going to use the bow for this uh, mission. Yeah. Not even in sneaky. Just like, <laughs> just against people. <laughs> Ag- aggressively. And it's really good. Huh. No, I... It's a good It's a good weapon. I use the Lancaster repeater because it has 17 shots or something in it. And that the, the bigger shotguns with four or five shots before you have to reload. That yeah. was pretty much all I used. Uh... 
I'm just looking at my notes here. I don't Before think Before we there's transition into the, the big boy. Else, aside from story... The story stuff, I... There are, you know... There are some story things that relate to gameplay that I'll talk about, but no, mm -hmm. I think that I think that's about it. Story, story time. All right, Rockstar. <sighs> Rockstar writing is weird because I think their parody, their like more goofy stuff, uh, maybe is decent at the time and then ages very quickly. Um, and then they have always been very good at doing, like when they want to do a hard hitting story beat, they go, they're, they're good at it. And those things hold up over time. Uh, but they've always had a certain style and pacing to their stories, um, that they seem to have thrown in the garbage for Red Dead. <laughs> yeah. hundred percent. And thank God, because I think if this had just been more of that GTA style writing, it would have been very detrimental to the whole experience i think mm -hmm. uh go ahead uh that was my opening statements for the red dead story <laughs> i think the red dead story is the biggest surprise out of all the things we talked about yeah all the things that we praised the open world being almost a revolution in the genre and feeling like something from the future I still think the story is the best part about it. The story is what the heart like, can latch onto properly for me. Yeah. Yeah. There are, there's a reason television has become so popular yeah. compared to movies. And it takes a long time to really attach yourself to people in stories, mm -hmm. to characters. And Rockstar feels like the first video game which can afford to spend so much money in putting in quests where you just bond with these characters. And there's a lot of characters in the camp. And there hasn't been a game which I think respects time building with characters like Red Dead. Yeah. This, I think, Red Dead might be the longest action adventure game in terms of original story content ever made. I think the only thing that can come close to it is RPGs. And... I think maybe only the Witcher series is anything that comes close. You can't compare something like Skyrim where half the game is Skyrim you running through caves. Not a story game, really. That's a... Yeah. I mean, the Witcher... I would be... Yeah, the Witcher is much bigger, much longer, obviously. Uh, I would be interested if you were to line up Red Dead 2 and Witcher 3 and you were just counting the time spent doing quests, like unique scripted content, which would win because Red Dead 2 feels like the longest game ever made. <laughs> well, I it mean, The Witcher 3 is like 100, so 100 hours longer than The Red I'm Dead. I'm not talking about playtime. I'm just talking about how long it feels. Sure. It feels like the longest journey portrayed in a video game story. Mm -hmm. Interesting. I'm not saying it is the longest video yeah, yeah, game because yeah. it obviously isn't, but it feels like the longest. It is a very video long campaign. Of, it's probably of all like. Time two or three times longer than their other games. Uh, and I think it's because it doesn't try and tell a very grand story. The story is very simple. Yeah. You are trying to get the fuck out of your situation. Yeah. America is changing and you're trying to leave. And that's pretty much it. What's interesting about it is that there's really not much of a traditional story to that game. There is no... Not really. There's, you know, near the end, things start to change and... Yes. You know, there's definitely like, okay, there's an end goal. There's a bit more of a villain. But like the majority of that game, which is a, a lot of it is the chapter two and three. Um, you're just like living the life of mm -hmm. the cowboys with your buds and your camp, your gang. And it's shockingly small and slow. Yes. Um, and very surprising. Yeah, the whole thing, especially the first three chapters, but uh, yeah, the first four chapters, four, you know, there, there's a little bit more stuff that happens near the end, but the first four chapters are just like, you know, hey, man, we're just, it's just living in the life with the gang and you're doing, you're getting to know the characters and you're, you're doing, like, they're cowboys for Christ's sake. Like, they didn't need to do anything. They did whatever they wanted. And today we're going fishing and that's it. And then you go fishing. Man, what a life. And then you come home and you eat your stew and you sing around the campfire and you go to bed. And the next day 
you go hunt a bear. And the day after that, you like try and steal a stagecoach. And it, like, and it just goes and goes and goes for so long of just like, no, nothing, there's nothing really happening here. And it's really nice. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, it just, it really takes its time. Yeah. And the characters are definitely the core of that story. Uh, oh, and, God. Yeah. And <laughs> I, I really never would have expected to be able to compare a Rockstar game, specifically Red Dead, to Mass Effect. But mm. they it's like they took the Normandy and the joys of returning after a mission and talking to your crew yeah, on the yeah. ship and made like 80% of their game about that. Yeah. Uh, the vast majority of story missions are just and story things and character building are just hanging out at the camp and doing stuff with your your gang and and very for the most part it's mundane stuff and it's really enjoyable <laughs> uh i think it's just because the characters are fantastic yeah definitely. there's a, a fantastic dynamic range of characters and every single one of them is given enough time yeah and all of them are memorable like you could easily list every single member of the camp right now if you wanted to yeah for sure and it's just because they are willing to take their time and like we were saying with the emergence stuff previously they just don't really care at times if you're having fun <laughs> yeah. they put their objectives of what they want you to experience and feel first yeah and it's just kind of surprising for a enter how many hundreds of millions of dollars this game cost to make yep. and how many people they knew were going to buy it. It's like, it's risky pacing and I loved it. Yeah. I absolutely loved it. It felt like a well done TV show all the way through. My my favorite missions in games are usually the ones where you you don't engage in combat in, in, mm. in games in general. You know, where it's like, oh, we're going to the ball in The Witcher 3 and we're going to, you know, or we're going to do this and you're just, you're just, being in the world and being with the characters and learning about all that stuff. Those are always my favorite missions in games. And Red Dead, again, it's like they made the whole game like that. Or, you know, the vast majority of it. It's just like, it, it all ties into that feeling of, like I said, of, of authorship. Where it's just like a crazy person got a billion dollars to make the biggest game of all time. And no one said no at any point. And then they just <laughs> yeah. made this weird monstrosity that I, I'm baffled exists. And I'm... In so many ways, it's like, did you, did you make this game for me? Me? Like, I'm, a, I'm not a, I'm a crazy person. I don't. I, you shouldn't make big budget games for me because I, I like weird things. I, uh, but, but you did. Okay. I mean, I'll take it. Thanks. Uh, and that's just, yeah. It was, it's really, very surprising how relaxed and slow that game is. And. Also, from a writing, like, tonally, uh, there are certainly goofy characters. Uh, there's some pretty goofy stranger missions in, in St. Denis. And, oh, yeah. You know, but they're, they definitely feel fewer and far between than they ever have, which is good. Um, because most of the writing, like, a lot of the main writing in that game is really... Um, I don't know. Somber is not the right word, but it's very mature and reflective. Yeah, it's, it's grounded. It's not... Yeah. It, and it's a lot of it's a silly. lot of characters knowing that the end of the world for them, it, the end of <laughs> their world, is right around the corner, and not wanting to admit it, and not wanting to like confront the past and the future, and it's a very maturely written game for the most part, in a way that is really surprising to me from a rock star because because they have such a history of pretty goofy writing a lot of the times mm -hmm. uh, like i said they when they want to do an emotional and mature moment they can and they're good at it but this game it's like they really it feels like the writers aged by 20 years between gta 5 and this <laughs> and they like had kids and had their kids grow up and they're like getting old and like <laughs> contemplative and reflecting on their life now and they're writing G or red dead 2 uh, but it's only yeah. been five years since gta 5 um and yeah, the characters are the heroes. Uh, I will save one character uh, yeah. for a few minutes from now, I think, uh, if I may just diver di diverge slightly off topic. Something related okay. to story missions. I think the biggest negative I would say about the story is how the mission structure can be very... It's very old feeling, um, which 
often doesn't bother me, but it's very old and very formulaic and repetitive in terms of the actual, just like the peeled back structure of the missions. I mean, just like shooting waves of enemies? So many of the missions are like, you get on your horse and you ride for five minutes while someone talks at you. And then you start, you, you either do the thing and then you ride back or you do the thing and it goes wrong and you have a shootout and then you ride back. And there's a real, so many of the missions follow that sort of, basic formula of let's get on our horse let's ride somewhere and do something and then let's come mm -hmm. back and again that's when i lean back and look at it and be like yeah that is maybe a little problematic but I, it's, it, it's not something that really bothered me it was just something i sort of observed and be like yeah i know they're doing this the missions are very following a very similar structure often but it never got in the way for me um Chapter six felt a little too long, uh, but that, again, not necessarily a huge problem. Rockstar games often have felt too bloated, like they are stretching, you know, they're like, we don't want, we want our game to be 40 hours, we don't want it to be 20, even though it'd be way better if it was 20. Uh, I don't think that's the case with this. It, 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 you know, maybe they could have cut a couple missions from chapter six and I, or, or put those earlier in the game, I don't know, but... I think chapter six felt long for me because I was fucking depressed. Well, that, yeah. Uh, <laughs> chapter six, five and six are also miserable. <laughs> chapter five is kind of a weird mess, but I enjoyed it. I like, I liked it. Some people don't like it. I did. Oh, yeah. I get why people don't like it. Um, yes, I can see it, but I like it. Another thing that sort of ties into those first five hours of learning, and this has been the case with every Rockstar game for me, and this is probably the oldest feeling thing in the game, is how restrained, or uh, not restrained, how like constrictive the design is of the missions in that uh, you better play the story missions exactly the way Rockstar wants you to. Otherwise mm. you're going to fail. Um, yeah. And that is, that feels very counterproductive or counter to open world this generation, especially where it's like, we want you to, you know, we want like breath of the wild and MGS five. It's like you can y y emergent, you know, play your way where the game is going to react to how you play. Whereas mm -hmm. Red Dead is like, no, no, we've designed this story mission to be played exactly this yeah. way. You're going to take but a I sniper think, and do this. I think that's because they, they pushed, I think they went more for a naughty dog feel at times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, yeah. And they went cinematic. And I, that's how they've designed all of their story missions. And I think, again, when you lean back at, and you look at it, you're like, this is very old in a way that's sort of surprising. Uh, and the first few hours I was experimenting and failing. And then I realized, and this is every time with a Rockstar game, after a few hours, I'm like, oh, right. They want to play it, want me to play it cinematically. And then I do that and I'm fine. Like, I like playing games that way. I, it doesn't bother me. Um, it was just one of those things that like stood out initially. And then once I acclimated to just going to the yellow dot and doing exactly what the objective says, I was fine with it. And I basically never failed the mission again. Uh, but it was just one of those things that stands out as like, I don't think they needed to make their story missions be, you know, free form, like immersive sim. Obviously that's mm. ridiculous, but it, it, uh, it just sort of stands out, especially after the last few years of a lot of games being pretty friendly towards emergent play styles in, yeah. and experimenting in main missions. But they want to do their cinematic stuff, and I was very on board with it after a few hours of, again, getting used to it. And then I was like, okay, we're good. Let's do this. Uh, yeah, I feel like this is the first time they've ever really successfully pulled off very cinematic feeling mm -hmm, quests. Mm -hmm. I know they've done big stuff in GTA, but I don't think it was going to ever click until you can make the game really look the piece, if you know what I mean. Yeah. Uh, and, GTA 5. And we haven't talked about graphics yet. GTA but 5 was there. pretty good about it, but... Uh, yeah, there's some really cool moments in GTA 5. There's a real but, cinematic feel to a lot of 2, Red Dead 2. For some reason, like, the end of Chapter 3 feels more cinematic than anything they've ever done, and it wasn't even that crazy in comparison to stuff they've done in, like, GTA. Yeah, it's a very low-key mission, but it's... It, the, the way it played out yeah. and the way it looked just felt... It felt so much... Oh, I don't, it, it felt... I don't know. It, it was, that was Naughty Dog level stuff. Cinematography and um, music usage in games is under... It, it, it's not good enough uh, most of the time. Uh, like, cinematography, especially in games, is very just like, 
shot over the shoulder reaction shot, you know, and then mm-hmm. the action scenes, it's like they stick the camera close and do whatever. But Red Dead's very good about um, framing things when they yeah, want to. That's true. Uh, like the again, the end of chapter three, the way the camera, the way the cam- the placement of the camera is, and Oof. the way it's lit is very important. So good, and that ties into the music. Uh, the music is uh, the soundtrack of this game is incredible. Oh my god, uh, the soundtrack is so good. They have like lots of good, nice ambient world music. That the original music that they composed for. Well, it's all original, I suppose. There's no licensed music, um, but like the, you know the sort of traditional musical instrumental stuff that they use. That stuff is amazing and can get like mm. really, really sinister, like borderline horror movie sounding at times. Yeah, I think my favorite you know, use of that was when they are Dutch and I Arthur. Uh, talk about going into Saint Denis for the first time. That oh, okay. that was my favorite like use of dark music because these are cowboys. They hate big cities. I also don't like big cities. Uh, growing up in the country, and they're like sitting outside of Saint Denis, and there's just this like really creepy like just like droning yeah. malice in the music, and I'm like, yeah, that's a big city to me as well. Let's not go in there. Um, my favorite song. Uh, how do I say it's non-spoilery yeah. there's a track that comes on after chapter 5 you return to a location and something happens yeah. and there's a confrontation and there's like a really sharp striking horror like soundtrack going on through that whole scene and it was so good Yes, I've been looking for that that specific part of the soundtrack for a while and I haven't found it yet. Yeah, they haven't released the full they haven't released the soundtrack yet, and that's I, I'm desperate for it because um the it's really good. Like the, yeah. it's so I mean, every, like everything in the game, it feels like they wrote bespoke music for every single scene. There is like mm-hmm. a staggering amount of unique music tailored perfectly for what's going on. Um they use they did this in RDR one, of course, uh, but they use lyrical music written for the game as well, uh, and it's very, very powerful when used properly. Uh, and something that games don't do enough of. Uh, the the super giant games are good at it. Bastion, Transistor, Pyre all have a good song or two with lyrics uh, that is really well used. Red Dead does it so well. There are a few pieces. I th- yeah of music that are really really tremendous uh, mm, i could be wrong but i think they actually used the um kind of the more menial background stuff for when you're just uh exploring the world i think that tonally changes over time oh i would I say could have been wrong yeah but the stuff in chapter six it was all kind of very somber yeah all the stuff when you were riding around and it rained a lot in that chapter yeah as well. i noticed that uh i wouldn't be surprised <laughs> that they they sort of subtly tweaked those things um mm. the soundtrack yeah i mean gta 5 has an amazing soundtrack the original soundtrack like they got tangerine dream and there's a lot of good 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 original music written for gta 5 but red dead's is better and oh so good very like all over the place and in a way that really really works um yeah it was bored borderline experimental at times (laughs) (laughs) yeah some of it feels like really uh modern like yeah there's a few shootout soundtracks different genre yeah they they sound very modern but they're not uh yeah the soundtrack's real good um so i think the last thing that we haven't talked about uh is my personal favorite thing in the whole game thing i feel bad saying calling him a thing um arthur motherfucking morgan mm-hmm. is the best video game protagonist of all time yeah sure. i <laughs> have never liked a video game hero protagonist player character more than arthur morgan uh, he is great i have such a good i, I have written down uh roger clark that is the name of the voice and face of uh, arthur morgan Tr- what a tremendous actor uh, mm-hmm. capable of so much variety um, rockstar protagonists are uh, maybe not the best all the time they can be a little all over the place tonally and a little all, yeah. and like a little you know oh I need to get out of this life but I keep doing these bad things um, 
Oh, goddamn, Arthur, you're so good, dude. <laughs> he is a great character. He's, like, funny and cheeky and really sad. <laughs> yeah, he's got enough good in him to make you root for him. Yeah. He's not just a, a bit of a dickhead. But he, he, he has his he, faults. He can be a real scary guy at times if he needs to be. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. But he is, like, a very exceptionally human character in a way that I really, really latched onto. Uh, and that, that took time, obviously, uh, because it takes a while before you really start to understand who he is. But man, oh man, what a good character. Um, yes. They, they just do a fantastic job of all the characters. They yes. are the stars of the entire game. For Every character has its moments, has their moments. And... I I think they did an amazing job with Dutch. Yeah. I don't know how, how far I can go into it. I don't even know if stuff really counts as spoilers when you know what's going on in Red Dead 1. Yeah. But he has an arc. I'll just say he has an arc. And it's very, very slow and steady. Yes. In a way which I thought was, like, masterfully handled. And, like, by the very end of the game, his ending scene, I just I thought it was brilliant. Yeah. They do a fantastic job of weaving... Our, it, Red Dead Redemption 2 story wise feels like it was if it feels like they wrote this entire game before they made Red Dead Redemption 1 uh, that's mm. how seamlessly they sort of weave the two stories together like thematically character arcs like everything it, I, when it was over I was like I need to go play Red Dead 1 right now uh, yeah it feels like one story yes it doesn't feel like part one or part two no it just feels like one it's really i didn't think they would weave them together so seamlessly but they no, nail no, it um tremendous really really like that was the thing that really made me love the game is the story work and and arthur and the characters around him are all yeah just oh, some of the best work in video games in that department yeah yeah, and and you know there was an interview probably the best. with the cast recently. Like they they worked together for five years, and and all of the stuff they filmed together on the mocap stage together. Like, and it shows. You know, these are mm -hmm. it's good actors working with good material, and they're working together. So there's that that snappiness and the flow to dialogue that you don't get by recording things separately uh, and without chemistry between actors. And uh, yeah. It's really amazing what they do with, with the characters. Yeah. Uh, that, that stuff is all important as well if you want to make any sort of emotional impact on the player. Yeah. Like, I, I'm not going to care when people eventually die in the game because, you know, it's a big gang and it's a rock star game yeah. and stuff goes wrong. People people die along the way. Yeah. And, you know, you got you have to put in the work for people to give a shit. Yep. And, and there's, reasons, <laughs> there's reasons why some of the biggest shows in the world are the ones that kill people off. People love that shit. It's a fun, scary moment. And I like playing a game when you know that they aren't shy about doing that. You know, when they do, they will just cut someone out. Yeah. And obviously we're not going to spoil that stuff, but all the stuff in the game that is along that lines is very, very well handled. Yeah. Never like too melodramatic. You always attach to the, I don't want to say too much, but it's very well done. Yeah. I had a lot of like George, my jaw like hit the ground. There were definitely a few times I was like, like, "Oh fuck!" Yeah, uh, and, and you know, yeah, they they make you care about the characters, and when they take characters away, it hurts, and you're like, "Man, yeah. that was." They're very, they're very tactful about it as yes. well. It's not like The Walking Dead where you're like, "Oh shit, that guy died," or Game of Thrones where like this guy's definitely dead. Yeah, I never really felt confident about the fate of anyone. I was like, is he going to die? Is he going to live? And if you can get that balance right, that's when you can get suspense pretty easily. I think I I never really thought about like, oh, are these, what character is going to live or die? I was just like, you know, you just go about your daily life in that game of like, oh, the, the characters are here. And then, and then, nope, you know, something <laughs> terrible happened. And you're like, oh, Jesus, I wasn't, oh, shit. Uh, and it just sort of yeah. hits you in a way that like, a, a, a real out of nowhere death would where you're just like whoa yeah i wasn't oh i wasn't ready for that um yeah well we have been talking mildly about stuff yeah but the, you know it's nice to like i said the 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 red dead or the G rockstar games have always been good uh i've always enjoyed them but the the story stuff in in red dead 2 if it wasn't 
the way it was, I would feel the way about Red Dead the way I feel about most of the Rockstar games, which is like, hey, it's it's very good. Uh, does some really amazing things. You know, top five for sure of the year, no problem. But the I never have an I have never emotionally been attached to Rockstar games and their characters, mm. and this one was the first one that really. I really did get invested. Uh, and that was definitely, I agree when he said it's the most surprising part of it to me, I think is just how compelling the story stuff is and the character work. Uh, it is, it's the best uh, character driven story, maybe game story that I've played. Yeah. Yeah, probably uh, it, games are so rarely character driven, you know, it, it's so I'm a big fan of character stuff. Ooh, yeah. Uh, Tale, Tales from the Borderlands was one of my favorite oh, that, games. Yeah. yeah. Just because I absolutely love the characters. And if you can put a group, good group of people who I'm attached to, and I, I get to explore, do stuff, and bond with them over a long time, and it's high quality, I'm just going to love it. And it's the best in video games. I, I don't know if that's a bit overconfident to kind of state that objectively, but I do think this might be the best character storytelling in video games. Yeah, it, it helps that it's like over such a long period of time. You know, most games don't get to do so much for so long. Yes. Uh, God, the campaign is so long. It is really. It is a long <laughs> game. It's like it's sixty so hours long. to do the main campaign. Yeah, uh, but I, I think it was important. There's not many games that really feel like a journey. Yeah, uh, games can not even be that long and feel like a journey. I remember playing The Last of Us. Yeah, and how long is The Last of Us? Fifteen to twenty hours. Maybe fifteen. Yeah, but that game just feels like you went so far. Yeah. You know, like when you watch Lord of the Rings and even though it's only a nine hour thing, it just feels like everyone's come so far yeah. during those nine hours or 13 if you watch Extended. Yeah, always. And Red Dead was one of those games where right near the end before I finished chapter six, I climbed back up the mountain mm. to where the intro was, which was only about two weeks ago when I played it. <laughs> yeah. And it just felt like 40 years ago yeah. that I was up in those mountains. And the journey, the way they paced the events and spread things out, it just feels like you go so far with these people. Yeah. It's it's masterful. I think it's amazing. Yeah, I, think I agree. It's an amazing story. I do agree. Yeah. And um without that, I would definitely not speak so positively or feel so positively. Like uh, I, Yeah. It, it it you know, it, it's like giving Witcher 3 like a, a not a uh, Witcher 3 is, you know, a little uh, <laughs> but it's getting up there you know getting close it's like you know you get that sort of emotional attachment to it that is rare for games i feel like for me where it's like ah the yeah. witcher 3 ah uh, uh, horizon ah think... uh, red dead redemption 2 you know yeah uh, i think we're, we're both very much story people yeah yeah for sure background of i don't know just watching too many movies <laughs> yeah. or something like that yeah. but all my favorite games have been very much uh carried by a narrative yeah. i i'm a big fan of stuff like soma the, the Last of Us, I like the original Bioshock games. Obviously, those games are not just narrative. They are complemented by good gameplay, except for Soma. Um, <laughs> yeah, and maybe but Bioshock, I, I don't know anymore. But, you know what? Yeah, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> so, I, I've seen some reviewers who just don't give a shit. There's some people who hate Naughty Dog games because they don't, they're just not invested in that stuff. They're a bit more old school. They're in it for the game. Yeah. And Which is, I, I can't help but, but just be a little bit tilted and biased towards games that have fantastic narratives yeah. and i can kind of understand people who don't really like red dead redemption 2 totally because i am not crazy about the gameplay and i think some of the gameplay mechanics not are bad some are just a bit uh, unbalanced and unutilized but i came away from this game just absolutely in love with it just because of the memories of the people i was with and the story in the camp mm -hmm. i think it depends why where, where your priorities lie on how much you will enjoy this game. I can definitely see yeah. some more like arcadey, fast paced gameplay type people not having a very good experience with Red Dead. Yeah, if you're all about game feel, Red Dead is not for you. Uh, because yeah. it's it's a bit of a nightmare sometimes. Like it's that's the theme for the whole thing for me. It's just like it's made by crazy people for crazy people. And I love it. <laughs> good on them. I'm I'm the crazy person and I approve. Uh I, th I think the only minor complaint I had about the campaign was sometimes you kill a lot of people. Yeah. Like so many people. It's definitely a video game where, in that regard. 
<laughs> yeah, well, it was a little bit immersion breaking at time where I'm like, well, I like you, Arthur, but you just killed 40 police yeah. that were just doing their job. Yeah. And some of that stuff was just like, eh. Yeah, you get a bit of that naughty dog thing where it's like, all right, Nathan, you can put the fucking machine gun down, you psycho. (laughs) Uh, You didn't have to kill these people. Yeah, there are a lot of shootouts in that game, but there are, I feel like there are a lot more things where you're not shooting guys, which is nice. Yeah. Uh, Again, it's nitpicking. It's a video game, but it's just one of those immersion breaking things where they're trying to tread this very thin line and sometimes the line gets crossed on either side. Definitely, Yeah. yeah. It's it's a certainly not a perfect game by any means. Uh, many flaws, many interesting flaws, I think, that are are not necessarily they're, they're not like fundamental or deal breaking. It's just yeah. like a lot of curious design decisions that are probably not like objectively good, uh, but they all contribute to the the vision that what is Red Dead Two and and that vision is a, a unique one and one that won't be for everyone in a way that is very surprising. Um, yeah. But poof, if you connect with it, then it's... Yeah. Hmm. I'll, so, I'll save that for top 10 of the year, I guess. <laughs> God damn it, God of War! <laughs> Rip. Oh, I don't know, yeah. I'm glad I have a few months of reflection. Yeah, good luck with that. I need to start Nothing's thinking changing. about things. <laughs> I need to start thinking about things. We haven't even uh, talked about how the game looks. It's a damn, damn good-looking game as well. It looks ridiculously good. Yeah, I think the two main things are incredible draw distance. <sighs> yeah, and a really, really—I was going to say fun. I'm not sure if that's the right, right word. Just a really expressive lighting system. Yeah. Is that the right word? Yeah, I, I know what you mean when you say that. Yeah, it's almost exaggerated at times, where you'll be walking through uh, Saint Denis. And it would be nighttime and there's this dust storm and it's foggy and you can only see like the headlamps. And it just looks amazing yeah. in a way which probably isn't natural, but I don't give a What's shit. What's interesting about it, their I lighting the is like foggy look. simultaneously, like it can be very exaggerated, like you said, but it also like reacts with everything so correctly on like a yeah. smaller scale. Like, you know, it just feels like the vibrancy has been turned up. Oh, yeah. In the yeah. engine. It's, a it is a really exceptionally good looking game. Uh, probably, mm. I think more often than not, I would say it's the best looking game of the generation so far. Uh, ah. I need to get an Xbox One X, I guess. Maybe, yeah. Um, it's, it still look good. Don't get me wrong. You still look damn good. On an OLED, on an X. Woo. Boy, oh boy. Uh, yeah, oh, yeah, I bet. There's definitely, like, there are large parts of it where it's like, I. I would say it's very easily comparable in visual quality to a Naughty Dog product, but it's a massive open mm, world yeah. game, which is just ridiculous. Yeah. Uh, it's not the PC version will look very silly. Uh, oh, I cannot, I cannot wait for the PC version. Sixty FPS, <laughs> high frame or high resolutions, you know, that game will look ridiculous. Uh, I don't know what they do next. <sighs> I don't know. I can't imagine what GTA 6 will be like now. I mean, that game is probably so far away, but like they've raised the bar so significantly and they raised the bar so significantly that I don't expect other games to try to do what it did because it's just not reasonable. Um, And so I look forward to seeing what the next Red or the next Rockstar product is because it will probably be the only open world game between now and then that can attempt to top Red Dead 2's level of detail, I presume. I really want a new IP. I want them to do something different. Yeah, I wonder. I really like this direction. And there was an interview with one of the brothers, yeah. and they didn't really sound that sure on GTA 6, at least not for the next project. Yeah. I think he was commenting on the strange political stance the yeah. this world is currently in. Yep. And he was like, no matter what we make, it will be out of date by the time it comes out. Yeah, I... Can you imagine? Yes. You know, you can do like, how do you make fun of, you know, all this social justice stuff without treading on the wrong foot? Do you go left or right? Who do you piss off? It's like, everyone's so delicate, so I don't know how they do their satirical take on the world when they're making a game that probably won't come out until like 2025 if they were doing GTA. Like, from the interview, he just didn't sound like they had any idea how they would do GTA at the moment. So hopefully, I know people people love the GTA, but I'd like to see them just, you know, do something else. I, I think it would be great, you know, definitely. Yeah. Uh, like, very much like Naughty Dog. Like, 
you know, finish, do your Last of Us, but then just put all that stuff to bed. Do start doing new stuff. Uh, you know, and well, well, uh, you gotta you gotta imagine they know exactly what they're doing next and keeping it under wraps. Yeah, but the, well, with the case with Rockstar is maybe a little trickier because okay. those games are so expensive, and you know, like they they're gonna need to make GTA Six at some point to keep the doors, the lights on, you know? Uh, Come on, you got to be kidding. No, no, I, I mean like much longer term. Like you can't spend... They've got to be safe. Hundreds of while. millions of <laughs> dollars. On. Like yeah, if they alternate but... between like, here's Red Dead, it's fucking weird. Here's GTA, it's GTA. We made $12 billion. All right, here's the next thing. It's fucking weird, you know? Uh, but GTA was the most profitable piece of entertainment ever. Yeah, I mean, you would hope between GTA 5 and the success of Red Dead that maybe they can be like, why don't we take 10 years and not do GTA until like 2030 and instead do some other weird new thing? That I, I would yeah. love it. It would be great. Or maybe they don't Me do too. another open world game like Max Payne 3 was a, a linear action game. Yeah, I'd take something like that. Um, you know, Rockstar Table Tennis 2 coming 2024. Or just something more along the scale of Horizon or God of War. Yeah, like I, a twenty thirty hour. Something thing. smaller. Yeah, I, I, mm. I am fascinated to see what they do next. Because uh, then we get a Rockstar game every like three years instead of eight years. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> would you be nice? Most likely, we're pro they're probably. I don't know. Yeah, I, I don't know what they do next. Same with Naughty Dog. It's like I don't know what they do next, and I hope it's something new and unpredictable. That'd be cool. Uh, but I also like in my brain struggle to think of Rockstar as anything other than the Red Dead and GTA people, even though they have done mm -hmm. yeah. quite a few other things. Um, Hi, how the hell do we wrap this game up? It was the biggest game of the generation in terms of, um, you know, and uh, uh, I don't know. Uh, expectation i mean they haven't it's the first game they've made this generation this generation is five years old as of this today recording ps4 is five years old ah. today uh you know it's been five years since the generation started and there hasn't been a new rockstar game i would say uh expectations were maybe not for me but for mo for like the general audience shareholders i'm sure everyone was like everyone was holding their breath for red dead it felt like for the last two yeah. months and uh, it's the most next generation feeling game I've played this generation. <laughs> yes, easily. Uh, you know, um, so they, they, I guess they did it. They made another good video game, except it's gooder than before. It was like before. five times better than I thought it was going to be. <laughs> yeah, it is. And, is <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah, it is so much better than I thought it would be. Not that I expected it to be anything other than a very good. Um, I... Never thought it was going to come close to uh, being even like in the top couple of my video games of the year. Yeah, me too. I don't know why. I don't know why I had this. I was just, I didn't think it was going to affect me that much. I, I, was, I was like, people are going to love it. Yeah. It's another Rockstar game. Hey, I'm an old man. I've been around the block. I've done the GTA 4 and the Red Dead and the GTA 5. I've been there. Yeah. I don't need it. And it was something bigger and better than I imagined. Yep. I agree and with it's all one of that. Of the, it, 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 it's, a, it's a good game it was a very big very good game that we talked for way too long about we shouldn't even bother talking about forza <laughs> uh oh yeah forza should just end this show <laughs> now nah, let's talk about forza oh there goes my my buck 25 prediction for the length has just been blown out of the water uh eh, we almost talked for two hours about red completely <laughs> <Okay>. ruined uh, <laughs> it's a big game maybe the biggest yeah in terms of like size i mean i the witcher 3 is obviously still bigger um but like it's the biggest game i played since the witcher 3 and i think yeah. it's the game I, I it's like i like it it's the most i've liked a game probably since the witcher 3 as well mm. uh, and if you know anything about the map's good by the way what's that didn't talk we didn't even talk about how good the map is good map <laughs> yeah good variants and places we didn't even talk tons about of variants. That stuff. i mean yeah There's like, so much shit in this game it is a very gigantic very good video game. The end. <laughs> Sp the, the Spoilers, end. Rockstar made a good video game, except it's... So how about those broom broom cars? How about them cars, huh? They didn't have cars in Red Dead. They were The cars were horses in Red Dead. It, <laughs> what? That is just not... Horses more like... I don't know. Um, 
<laughs> Forza Motorsport. Nope. Hori is Forza no, Horizon Forza 4. Horizon 4. There we go. So I don't usually give a shit about racing games. No, I have, don't really like them. I've been preaching the good word on the Forza games and no one's been paying attention in our chat for years. I listened, we reviewed three and I listened. Yeah, you listened. I just, I wasn't gonna, I just wasn't gonna buy it. I don't care about racing yeah, games. Yeah, that's fair. But it was on Xbox Game Pass. Yes. And I am subscribed to Game Pass, so I was. It's basically given to me for free. Not, not really, but you know what yeah, I mean. Yeah, you know. <laughs> so I'm, I was like, all right, I'll download it and play it. And I was a little bit wrong about Forza Horizon. Mm -hmm. I thought it was a little bit. So I played Motorsport when I was a, a bit of a youngster. News fest. And it's very dedicated towards people who like cars. Yeah. And I would say Forza Horizon is still more dedicated towards people who like cars. The stuff is all there for those guys. Yeah. Uh, but there is still a lot of fun to be had for people who just don't give a shit and have only really connected with like arcadey yeah. races like Burnout yeah. or some of the funkier Need for Speed games. And that's me. That's me I as well. I only really liked Burnout. Yeah. Uh, and Forza Horizon... It accommodates for those people. I, I still wouldn't say it's really for people like me. You're definitely a little bit it's more into... I'm like the extreme don't like racing Yeah, games. I mean... You're like a, you've got a bit of flow. Yeah, <laughs> Forza know? is definitely not an arcade racing game like Burnout. No. But it's pretty... Cl maybe not even... It may not even be pretty close, but I think Forza's greatest accomplishment has always been, uh, you know, just letting you do everything the way you want to. Yeah. Being very And I would say this game still isn't made for people who only connect with Burnout Paradise, yeah. but it definitely caters for you. Yeah. And I don't know if it would be worth 60 bucks for people who are just like me, but for like five bucks or however much it is for one month of Game Pass, absolutely fucking lootly is it worth doing the silly stuff in this game. Yeah. Because the less serious uh, activities in this game, the more arcadey stuff, is a really, really good time. For me, I only really connected with the off-road races, which are the green icons. Yeah. They were all really good. And the events, what are they called? Uh, the showcase fest, events. Fest, the showcase events. They were the only things I really connected with. I, oh, there was also... Um, a, like, the category is called like jobs. The stories or whatever, yeah. Yeah, and one of them was testing out really fast cars, <laughs> yeah. which was really fun. And the first one was stunt jumps, mm -hmm. and I, I really enjoyed those. And I just played every single country race, and I've already forgotten what the events are called, showcases uh, that I could find. Had about 10 hours of fun for, you know, not a huge amount of investment on my behalf. And that was it. I loved it. Yeah. I basically just wanted to get my overall conclusion out of the way because I played a very small amount in comparison to you. You're you're taking a more deep dive into the experience and can probably review it better than I can. But just as someone who only really plays arcade shooters, to anyone out there who can relate to my feels on the genre, I would still recommend it because there's some really fun, non-serious stuff in this game. Yeah, that that's like the first thing I have written down in my notes. Um... I mean, Forza. I've only I've played uh, two, three, and four. I did not play the first one on the 360. Um, but it, they've always been good about you know giving you lots of different types of races to do. Something about four feels goofier than it has before. Mm. Um, part of that is due to the <laughs> the really amazing customization of cars. And more specifically, oh, yeah. I, the player character as well. Um, you know, they put dumb horns in. Like, one of the horns is the Windows XP shutdown noise, which is <laughs> yeah. just... I mean, what a genius move. I, like, <laughs> And, you know, like, you can you can create your character and customize them, and you can get exotic Wellington boots and yeah. the dab emote and floss, and you can, like... You know, when you go to interact with the beauty spots and your character is just dabbing in the background of this majestic English landscape and you're like, this is just so fucking stupid. <laughs> the game has a great sense of, like, irreverent 
humor, I think. And they, they don't really yes. force it towards you. It's sort of just in the sides for you to choose to engage with. And having being someone that likes to engage with that stuff, uh, I, I Forza Four made me laugh more than I was expecting. <laughs> um, what I've always liked about them is they, is that ability that where they just let you do do the races you want to do. You're going to progress. You can tune the difficulty however the hell you want. You're going to progress. You know, uh, it's been a series that's been very friendly, very relaxing. Yeah. Uh, and very enjoyable. And I, I mean, there's not a ton to say about four because it is like fundamentally very similar to one, two, and three. Obviously, mm -hmm. um, they. I think they've they made good changes to the progression system in this. I, I feel like three three was weird. I, I I would have to like go back and start it over to really confirm this. But I remember there being a lot of just like. You want to build your blueprint for this mission? Go ahead. And then there were like a lot of street missions, but I am like you. I like the off-road stuff. Uh, that's the most entertaining. Yeah. I like driving like a Range Rover with a dumb monster energy drink skin on it and just like hitting all <laughs> the huge jumps and honking my La Cucaracha horn or whatever. And, you know, it's just the off-road stuff has always been the main appeal for me. And for whatever reason, I don't remember there being a lot of it in three, but four... They're very good about, like, you progress through this and you're unlocking everything else or, or enough mm. of everything else. Uh, you know, you just... If you, if you get to a, an off-road event and it's like, oh, you have to drive a big pickup truck, you're like, I don't want to do that. I'm going to change... You know, you just go into the blueprints and be like, I'm going to change it to be Subarus or whatever because uh, those mm. are more fun. That's cool. Um, the new stuff... What's the... The new, the new things are really the online and the seasons... Um, yeah, the seasons were cool. Yeah, so I, uh, one of the things I would say is a little disappointing about 4 is the map. I think the map is quite... S it, it feels smaller and less varied than 3. Uh, 3 was a very large Australian map with jungle and beach and desert and city. And um, this feels a little more like, uh, you know, what England is, which is, Hey, yo, do you like green hills? <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah which is not a bad thing um it's but the map is a little smaller and less varied but they make up for that with the seasons which change every week uh all four seasons um and they very generous to give us british people a summer that was pretty yeah awesome. and a pretty uh snowy winter as well which i was a little surprised at um yeah and, we see them occasionally yeah yeah uh the the sunny summer is probably a little a little bit of a fantasy. Uh, yes. Yeah, <laughs> maybe not anymore. I don't know. That last summer sounded like it was pretty horrible. Um, yeah, it was for everyone. Uh, but yeah, the map is good. Like, they, they capture the, the feel. I don't know. I mean, I've been to England a few times. They capture the feel very nicely, I think. Oh, yeah. Uh, the big skies. That's what our countryside looks like. The, yeah, the countryside. The big skies, uh, like of Scotland, when you get sort of a little more north on the map. Uh, mm. And the, the smaller, less varied map is countered by the seasons which really do make it feel dramatically different when the seasons change yeah um and having not really played it for a few weeks now i don't know what season they're on so when i boot it up next i'll be like oh it's winter oh cool okay um you know it changes the handling model it changes some of the events uh it changes the look obviously quite substantially um, so the the map being inferior i think is not much of a problem because the seasons are there uh, and the seasons are a, a cool idea. Um, very well executed. That opening mission where you drive through all seasons is really tremendous. Uh, yeah. The, like, seamless transitions and all that. Uh, really cool. Uh, the online is the new thing that they've done. Like, there have been on... There's, you know, been a multiplayer... Uh, but it's always been like, hey, you want to join into multiplayer? Uh, it's always been opt in. Whereas now this is a an always online. Even actually, you can actually play offline, but by default, it's you're always online. There are always other humans driving around uh, when you're in free roam, and that's that stuff is neat. The best part of it is that they kind of just did the burnout paradise thing uh, of 
every hour in Forza 4, there is an event called the Forza-thon, and it marks it on the map, and everyone drives there, and it's like 15 minutes of the, the group in the world doing stunts or hitting drifts or speed zones, and you have to accumulate, you know, X number of score to progress to the next stage of the event, and it's just a bunch of cars driving over a big jump over and over again, and it's really dumb. Yeah, that sounds cool. And uh, it, it it's a lot like Burnout Paradise's multiplayer. Uh, and that stuff's really good. It, it makes it feel... There's a great loop of, like, you play, you do some races, you maybe do, collect some side stuff, like jumps or billboards, and then the forza -thon thing happens, and you go do that, and it's all so seamless... Uh, and it, it adds a lot to it, I think. They've done a good job of turning it into, you know, a bit more of that games as service-y thing uh, that everyone is so hot for right now. Mm. I think they did a really good job of, like, seamlessly turning Forza, for Forza Horizon into one of those games. Uh, granted, I'm not, like, a hardcore Forza player, but it's the it's the best entry of, this, of a series of extremely good games, I think. Uh... One, two, three, all amazing. Four is just a little bit better. Uh, I, like, I don't have a ton to say about it. You know, I, I, the core loop of movement in that game is so enjoyable. Like, the driving model feels so good. The game looks so good. Just the moment-to-moment -moment gameplay is endlessly enjoyable. And I think it has maybe the best portrayal of speed oh, yeah. out of any racing game. And I didn't think anything would dethrone uh, Burnout Paradise mm. as being the fastest feeling game. Oh, those, but when those you, fast cars are scary. <laughs> when you do those fast, the fast cars uh, little sub-quest things yeah. and you get to drive all the fastest cars in the game, holy shit, they were terrifying. They're so fast. Oh my God, they're so fast. Yeah. Uh... I also want to quickly say that uh, the Halo mission, oh. doing the Halo, driving a warthog through the countryside <laughs> of my country yeah. was one of the most bizarre things I've ever seen in my <laughs> life. I really had a moment where I was like, I have no idea what's going on here. It gave me some very strange emotions, yeah. I'll tell you that. Yeah, I bet. That's a really good very showcase. Strange. I really like that one. Oh, it was great. Yeah. All the showcases are really good. Some are better than others. Yeah. The train... It was great, the hovercraft, and the bike stuff wasn't as good, I think. But most of them are really I've good. I've always liked them. They're, like, really staged, and you always win by, like, 0. 0.2 seconds or whatever. But uh, yeah. they're really cinematic and really well presented in a way that I've always mm. enjoyed. Yeah. Uh, and I guess, yeah, the stories are new as well, where there is, like... It's basically just a series of similar missions with, like, a very light story connecting them together. Mm -hmm. Like, you're working for a director making a movie and you have to do these dumb stunts for the movie yeah. and it's very basic but it, it it's another element of variety to the the loop of driving uh that isn't just hey let's race from point a to point b or do six laps or whatever uh like you can do a lot of stuff in that game without you can spend a lot of time playing that game without actually doing races which is cool um mm -hmm. And uh, it, it's a, I find that game very uplifting. It's a very chipper, enjoyable, fun, pleasant, positive experience. Uh, which yeah. I think we all need more of now than ever, I feel like. Uh, and Forza 4, every time I play it, I'm just like, ah, this game, this game just makes me feel, I'm just having a good time. This is pleasant, happy, fun times. Um, and yeah, I, I yeah, I, I, there's not a lot to say, especially after talking about Red Dead for two hours. But it's uh, <laughs> it's oh, it's probably the best racing game that I've played. Um, yeah, I, I obviously can't <laughs> don't really have a very strong opinion when it comes to that. Yeah, I haven't played many either. But um, you know, burn up. But I was I was very very happy. Yeah. To, to get like a solid 10 to 15 hours out of a game I had no interest in. And I downloaded just to try. Mm. And I would recommend it to people who don't even like racing games. You're not going to get your money's worth compared to people who do like racing games. But there's still stuff in there to enjoy. Yeah. And that's that's the Forza, the Forza thing. Is just, it's, it's very friendly and accommodating to whatever play style you want. Um, oh yeah. I remember when I went into the car customization. 
and I saw like how deep it went, and I was like, "Holy shit!" Oh, it's crazy. <laughs> this is the real deal for people who want. I've this never stuff. touched any of it. <laughs> It was nuts. Yeah. Like you could tune the suspension by degrees and all that nonsense. Yeah. I, I don't know anything about cars. I don't care about cars. Uh, yeah, I, I appreciate the aesthetic value of a good car sometimes. Yeah. Uh, and I have certain, you know, mild nostalgia for some cars, like the good old James Bond Aston Martin, you know. Mm. But like, yeah. I don't care about cars, but I've always enjoyed the Forza Horizon games because they, they're friendly and they've got personality. And 4 has the most personality of any racing game I've played since Burnout Paradise. Uh, racing games have been very cold and very like, we love cars and this is a game about racing cars and we're going to talk about how much, you know. And it's just like, I don't, fuck off, I don't care. And Forza is just like, <laughs> dab, 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 we don't care either, yeah. Uh, I mean, they do care. They do, but like, they don't, I know what you're saying. They don't force it on you. Um, no, not at all. It's a, but man, if like you are a fan of cars, this might be the best racing game ever. Uh, yeah. The detail. I don't know if you like ever like peeked in the models oh, where crazy. you can sit inside the car. Oh, yeah. It's nuts. Yeah, yeah. Holy shit, this game looks amazing. Oh yeah. Uh, God, we've said that so many times this year. Video games just look ridiculous. Uh, yeah, they jumped a lot this year. Yeah, like I've been playing. I played all of Forza on my TV, but play uh, with my PC plugged into my TV. So 4K, nice. 60 HDR. Regularly, I thought this is the best looking thing I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> uh, but I feel like I, I feel that way more often than not now, where it's just like, this is the best yeah. looking thing I've ever seen. Holy shit. Uh, you know, uh, it's a little depressing to me that Forza Horizon 3 and 4 are Microsoft's best reviewed, most successful games this generation because they are yeah. still just racing games. But yeah, but they let's not let's not go down that yeah, rabbit hole. But they are so very <laughs> very good, and um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I like you said, Game Pass is cheap. You can play it on your PC. The PC port is tremendous. Uh, if you've ever enjoyed racing games, I think Forza Four is right up there, uh, and will make pretty much anyone happy. If you have any, if you have ever enjoyed racing, you should play it because you will find some enjoyment in Four for sure. Uh, because you can just tailor it to whatever you want, uh, which is very smart. Uh, yeah. Now let's talk about Assassin's Creed Odyssey. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was our longest talk on one game, did, for sure. Did we ever... We didn't do a... Well, no, we didn't. I was going to say, if we had done like a proper review of Witcher 3, that probably would have been uh, similarly lengthy, but we never did. So I guess... Uh, this is the probably the biggest longest and like most popular game we've ever done a review of i, I think i feel like probably yeah um trust that was less of a review and more of a movie <laughs> buckle in listeners yeah. i drop all the comments you want about how fucking stupid long this thing is we deserve it i you know we deserve they've been it. saying it for for like six years and we're not changing it yeah Get used to it. Thankfully, there are no but, more video games coming out ever again, so we don't have... Yeah, to what do we have for November? Uh... We have some stuff, but what will we be talking let's about? Let's see. Hitman 2? We'll, we'll definitely review Hitman 2. I will review Fallout 76. Fantastic. You won't be playing nope. it. Maybe... Will we bother talk... Sorry, go on. I was going to say, maybe, maybe Battlefield? I was about, yeah, I was going to say the same thing. It. Will we review Battlefield? I don't know. Maybe we'll just throw it in there at the end. Do we care to just talk about... Yeah, maybe just throw it in, like, how it feels? I don't know. I don't yeah. know. We'll figure it out. Hitman, we'll definitely. Figure, yeah. Fallout, almost certainly. Yes. And that might be enough. Yes, we will see how much we play of all those things. Yes. <laughs> <Especially> <laughs> Oh, I don't know what I'm saying. Anyway, thank you if you've stuck around for this entire marathon of us talking mostly about Red Dead Redemption 2. Sorry we took up uh, about half your week listening to it, but it's a, it a big game. There's fuckloads in it, and we want to talk about it, and we want to praise it. I like that game. But until then, we will see you... Wait, wait, what the fuck am I talking I about? I don't know. Until next time. <laughs> <laughs> we gotta click stop until... recording. We gotta get out of here. <laughs> until next time, everyone. Thank you for listening. We'll be back uh, probably beginning of December 
talk about uh, some stuff. Video games, am I right? <laughs> <laughs> you know, talking for two and a bit hours is difficult, all right? Give me a break. See you later, guys. Thanks for listening. Bye. <laughs>